Thank you. Uh, it's really nice to be here. I have to say I'm, I'm curious for a global perspective on this, so maybe I'll ask my impact question with a show of hands. How many people here would be excited if Google was building a neighborhood in your city? How many people would be excited about that and might want to live there? How many people would live anywhere but there, please? <laughs> okay, see, that's not the North American <laughs> response in some cases, so this is interesting. Um, so my name's Bianca, and uh, I live in the city of Toronto, and uh, I'm just... My background, I have three parts of a triangle. I worked in the private sector and in the tech sector for about 10 years. I did a variety of stuff, but I ended up as a product manager for a webcasting company. Um, for five years, I ran public consultations. So when governments needed to go and speak to people and make a decision, I would run the process. And uh, the last five years, I've worked a lot with data, data governance, procurement, those sorts of issues from a policy perspective. So last fall, uh, this project rolled into town, which is called Sidewalk Toronto. And I'm just going to give you, how many had heard of this? Okay, so how many hadn't heard of this? Okay, yeah, cool. So the very quick overview to this is that um, Sidewalk Labs is a subsidiary of Alphabet, so a sister, <coughs> sister company to Google. And they uh, won a bid that a public agency, it's a tri tripartite government uh, public corporation in Toronto, it's called Waterfront Toronto. Basically, they're in charge of redeveloping our waterfront. So they, they look after 800 acres of, of industrial, you know, what, what was a port, they're now developing it for real estate. So they, they uh, put out a tender to say we'd like an investment partner to do this work with us, and Sidewalk Labs won that bid. And they have committed up to 50 million US dollars to make a plan for a smart neighborhood. 12 acres, not very large. And no land has changed hands. So Sidewalk Labs does not own any real estate or any land, and that's being really misreported. So all this is is to make a plan. Is that pretty clear? Does anybody have any questions Sidewalk about that? Okay, so um, since this started last fall, I'm just gonna give you a few sort of notes from me, because as soon as this came on the, uh, came on the blog, <laughs> uh, my initial reaction was, <gasps> We're really not ready for this thing. So let me give you a, a flavor of what's happening in North America. We don't have a GDPR. We have privacy legislation. Um, in Canada, we have two tracks of it. We have a uh, Privacy Act, which governs all data that governments hold about people. And we have PIPIDA, which is a Commercial Consumer Protection Act, which governs all the data that companies hold about people. And I find this interesting from a global data governance perspective because we have a very clear difference of responsibility for those two things, which is not that common in the world. And so when this project came up, I said, I don't know that we're ready for this because our laws are already out of date. And so this sort of right away said, I'm not sure that we are prepared to manage what kind of issues might come out of this. So two big things struck me at the beginning. Um, one of them is that projects like this can start to blur the line between the market and the state. Because I was at the first meeting last fall, and if you can imagine this, the CEO of Sidewalk Labs was sitting on a stage and saying, we are here to improve your quality of life. We are here to make housing affordable. We are here to make sustainable, you know, uh, we're here to do good things for the environment. And if you would listen to it and wouldn't know who was talking, you would be sure it was a politician. And so if you can imagine, this is extremely confusing, because these are also people who come from the Bloomberg administration <coughs> in New York City, so they are ex-political people. Not to say that it, this is anything to do with a bad intention, I'm just saying as, as a resident, it is very confusing. <laughs> so that's one thing. The second thing that's confusing is that this is a $50 million investment, and so I don't know what it's like here, but the, the narrative of the innovation economy is the, the political excitement, what that means for the people that live in the city or might live in that neighborhood has not really been the focus of the political narrative. So I'm just going to share a few lessons that, um, that I've learned, maybe some suggestions if this were to happen in the neighborhood near you, <laughs> um, some ideas on how to maybe not have what happened in Toronto happen, because before I go into those, the main things that happened were, as soon as this discussion started, you know, I'm sticking my hand going, so who's gonna own the data collected in this neighborhood? All this internet, you know, we're building it in a neighborhood from the internet up, it's gonna have a digital layer, it's the city as a platform. Nobody can answer the question, who's gonna own the data? Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there going, okay, that's not a good starting point. And we're 10 months in, we've had two contracts signed, we still don't know who's gonna be owning the data. I know owning has been a contentious word here, but. As an example, these are things that, for me, should have been clear in a, in a request for proposal. 
not something that you're trying to figure out on the fly. So that, that's, and for me, having been in the open data space for about five years, if you can imagine the feeling of your local front page newspaper saying, who's going to own the data? We have arrived. <laughs> oh, this is scary, <laughs> right? Like it's, this is great, but also, um, so so it's been interesting. And um, I think uh, the other point before I just say the five things is that can you guess what topic has been the number one topic in, in the press? Can anybody guess which thing everybody's worried about? Somebody say privacy. One hundred percent right. It's all privacy concern, and it's very difficult. You may imagine to talk about governance with the local media. <laughs> so privacy is something that uh, Sidewalk Labs came in and they actually had hired an Ontario former um, privacy commissioner. So a woman who was 17 years the, the commissioner of the province of Ontario was already part of their team on the payroll. So it kind of, you know, was trying to say, okay, well, let's talk about privacy or we have a thing. But what I'm going to speak about, my bigger concern is that we are now considering building infrastructure with private sector partners, digital infrastructure, and we're not talking about it like that. At best, we're talking about privacy when there's a whole other level of building digital infrastructure in with partners. This, this is like becoming part of city operations. And this is the blurring that I'm concerned about is we're kind of losing track of, wait a second, but like is, who's doing the transportation planning policy here? What data are we using? How does that look? Is that open? Do the planners understand? You know, like there's a lot of stuff going on in there. So the five, um, the five lessons that I've learned from this <clears throat> to share, one of them is that the procurement of this, I would argue, should have been a consultation. Just the idea that everybody might want this, I think, was a flawed <laughs> starting point because this enthusiasm that politicians may have for this stuff, I, would, I, I can tell you for sure a lot of residents don't share that enthusiasm to be the lab for a global, you know, a global undertaking. So I would say if you do a procurement like this, that's the stage where you should start to be talking to people to say, is this a thing we want to do? If we do, what are some of the table stakes? You know, we maybe retain control of the, uh, of the data or the infrastructure. You've set those requirements in the procurement, not as part of the negotiation. The second piece that I find very difficult in this whole project is that the way it was framed at the beginning was we're going to talk about this for a year. If we don't like it, we'll part ways. We're going to have a long discussion with you, the community. How many people do you think are ready to talk about data governance and IP, generally speaking, just <laughs> neighborhood meeting? Not very many. And with a budget of $50 million, with $10 million US dollars committed to communications and public engagement, there has not been an extensive public education campaign, which I would argue there should be and should continue to be. So I find this, as, a, as an engagement person, if the people you're consulting with don't know what you're talking about, this is not a good situation. And this is kind of what's happening right now. So it's very easy to say that we have lots of meetings, but if no one understands what the meetings are about, who cares, right? So this is, this is I think, this point where I always think about this when I get on a train and someone always stops you and they say, hi, you're sitting beside the window with a little hammer. Can I talk to you about it? And we do this public, you know, we have moments where we say, this is kind of dangerous and important that we understand what's happening here. Shall we talk about it together? And I think, you know, having more of those campaigns that were the old time, you know, I don't want the atomic bomb, you know, fire safety campaigns. We should be talking about data as a public discussion right now. And it's, it's quite small as a topic. Um, the third thing, I argue that this data should be public data and that the infrastructure should be public infrastructure. Those are, that's obviously an editorial position that I take where I think that's what we should do. But I do think that cities sort of getting in their mind that they're um, data stewards and that's part of their job is to be setting up these policies is important rather than just receiving products. Because, you know, to be sold this kind of infrastructure you start to lose, again, this governance, this ownership, that this stuff is really important for policy moving forward. So just really trying to say, hey, cities, you're not just a purchaser here. You're, you're the government. This is, these are inputs to policy. You need to hold on to this kind of data. Um, the fourth thing is that these are very political. Smart cities, there's nothing neutral. We all, I would guess, know this, but there's nothing neutral about uh, the technology. I know that we could make a smart city in Toronto. I think this political administration loves this idea. I can also imagine some of the people that might run that would do this totally differently. And so I, I've seen our city council just vote to put microphones all over the city that pick up gunshot sounds. It's not, a, it's, it's very bad technology and we just bought it for $500,000. I mean, I think if that can be, like, if those kind of things are getting bought, the literacy of the purchaser is also an issue right now because this all sounds appealing when you have problems is to buy your way out of them. But 
what kind of technology. So if politicians know, hey, you don't have to do it this, you can still have a smart city where residents have a lot more control. What does that look like? What's a public version of a smart city? What's the infrastructure ownership look like? How is it decentralized or centralized or devolved? Is it? What does a governance look like? So that's a piece. Because it's not binary. I can tell how excited everybody wants to be. So I'm trying to create that. Like, you can still have it and have it different ways. So that's what I don't really like about the Toronto situation is it was a starting point of saying, we're doing it. Now we're going to mitigate negative consequences rather than how would we like to do this? What data would we like to collect? Right? Because it's all different. And then the last thing that I'm a big promoter of right now and it's not also a big fan from the political side is to talk about agile policy. Like to just kind of say, just start putting some rules down. They're probably going to be half wrong, but that's okay. We'll work on them together. Because I don't know about here, but there's a lot of like holding and waiting, maybe waiting till you get it perfect. And in that absence, you just continue to have things, you know, come and develop and products and services. And the idea kind of seems like there's no other way out of this thing. So just having a little bit less of a concern about laying down different pieces of policy and just doing it in an agile way and saying, hey, I, I try to tell them I'm wrong all the time. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. But you just write it down. If it's wrong, you fix it. Again, not a huge uh, political communication. <laughs> Politicians are really big fans of that kind of a narrative. But I think we have to start being um, more open about just the need to try to figure out how to govern and you know how to govern. Because, I'll close on this, the idea that people walking around in public space are having their behaviors commodified in IP and being sold back to the government is blowing my mind that this is a thing that we're doing. Because they are selling products that use data from Android devices, you know, do a lot to it, so it's not just raw data that's being resold. But me walking around the city, if my government wants that, I would like to discuss how else I might be able to give it to them for free. Because why shouldn't we just be benefiting from our own existence? If there's something happening here that's quite profoundly ethically strange uh, to me that we're, that we're commodifying our, our behaviors. And the problem with this is that this is aggregate anonymized data. So this is where this idea of the individual and this ownership about me starts to fall apart. So what's our collective desire to use our data and our behavioral information? you know, as an input to city planning, and how would we govern that? So I've been, you know, hearing data trusts are being thrown around a bit late, and I'm very excited to start to explore that, because that's something that Sidewalk Labs has also brought forward as something that they want to do. So flexibility in a governance mechanism, that sounds like it might be something to consider, but who knows? So I can tell you the adventure will continue. We've had, uh, and next spring should be when the plan is final. Um, and at this point, there's a lot of unknowns, uh, but I will continue to I make a little blog posts on Medium and try to keep track of what's going on. So if, if you want to check in, I try to do it every two weeks. Thank you. <laughs>